All right, so we on. You might have to unmute my brother so we can get this together real quick tonight, man. Um, right. Yeah, of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, and my man, Marquise, man. We got another subject that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, it should be interesting. should be a lot of information, right, um, as far as what it is that we're going to produce today. Um, of course, if you're liking the video, man, always hit the like button, hit the share button, um, comment. If you have any questions, let us know. Tonight, we're going to talk about um wash machines what type of different wash machines real quick man so i'm just gonna share my screen so we can jump into that real quick all right let's go so and start having that discussion man because this is an interesting topic here when we're talking about different appliances so um hopefully they can see the screen can you see the screen my brother yes sir we are on bro i appreciate you having me as always and uh, bringing forth uh, a way for us to engage with the people so we can bring the knowledge. Straight cool. to All right, so of course we're on the Whirlpool website, man, and we're going to talk about what are the different types of wash machines. All right, so according to this Whirlpool website, you actually have seven types of wash machines, right? Have you even considered that when you're talking about different appliances, like seven types? It's normally a few types that we deal with on an everyday basis. Uh, we don't always deal with all seven. Uh, we probably will say there's probably, what, three or four that we deal with consistently. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, okay. So hopefully today we can dive into that and talk about some of the pros and cons of each one, depending on um, which one that you prefer. We're going to give you what we think and how we feel as technicians when we do work on some of these appliances. And of course, we always give what, like a, a, a tool or a tip at the end of each um, um, video that we shoot just to try to help um, mm -hmm. customers to understand how these appliances work. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about, man, I could go over these real quick and then we're gonna dive into them. You got your front load unit, everybody's familiar with that. You have your top <laughs> load agitator, top load impeller, stack laundry centers, all in one combination, washers and dryers compact and portable. And of course, um, you have common washing machine sizes and washing machine features. So it's not really talking about seven types. It's just, I would say it's probably from looking at this, we probably got about six types, right? And then they got the, the sizes and the features that we can go into, all right? So we can start off today talking about front load washing machines, man. We see these a lot. When we yes, talk sir. about appliances, man, so I'm gonna just let you go ahead and do your thing. So when it, when you see a front load wash machine, you go into a customer house, man, what are the, some of the things that you actually, that comes to mind or how you feel about front loaders in general? Uh, first thing in mind is run. No, I'm joking, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> front loaders, um, front loaders a lot of time we uh, deal with older, a lot of people who uh, are one of their, uh, Plants is older, and uh, we'll give you some tips on things like that uh, at the end of the show as we pro progress through. It's probably getting around to that. Um, but smell, uh, maybe noisy, knocking, uh, leaking. Um, uh, um, that's really about it. Okay. Um, what, what do you think, uh, Rich? What, what do you kind of stumble across? Does that pretty much cover it all? I mean, yeah, that covers most of the stuff. But like when I go to a custom house, see a front loader. Um, in my opinion, I kind of like working on front loaders a little bit more than top loaders, um, because it's it's the issues that happens with front loaders are normally the same exact thing all the time, right? It's either it's not filling up with water. Um, when you deal with a situation like that, it could be the customer's water supply turned off. It could be the actual machine where the filter is clogged up and there's no water coming in could be a bad valve or a bad control, stuff like that. Or it's like really not draining or spinning, right? That's normally a lot of the common issues with machines, but with the front loaders, I would say, those are the issues that I deal with the most. And in my opinion, it's a lot easier to deal with those and repair those because front loaders give you the actual filters at the bottom of the machine where you can actually clean them up periodically so you have access to the drain pump. The top load is a little bit different, but we'll get into those when we get to that point. But like you said, with the gasket or the door boot seal, 
check out our video on consumer plan support, man. We got a lot of videos that we've done, a lot of views and comments on that video that we've done a couple years ago and teaching you how to actually clean um, the, the door boot seal and the glass, the gasket with bleach and water, which of course you wanna make sure you leave um, the door open for one, but you also wanna make sure that you use a lot of water and not a lot of bleach because we understand how strong bleach is, but you wanna make sure you clean that, right? Because like you said, it develops odor, it starts to smell. Um, it really has a strong smell, man. So you wanna leave Sewage. the door open. Um, that's one, clean the gasket periodically. And you also wanna use the tub clean setting or the self clean setting for the wash machine, right? So you wanna do that periodically every 30 cycles, which means every 30 days, or your machine at times is smart enough to remind you to actually clean the washing machine. I know with LG, they have the TCL code, all right? Your machine sends the soil inside of the machine to let you know how dirty it is. And then it reminds you and say, hey, we need to be clean. You need to self-clean. That's what the TCL setting is on the machine. So, um, you know, a lot of the, the same stuff that you see there as well. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up, man. And I'm going to actually go ahead and share my screen again so that we can continue to... Um, well, I have one more for you. Front um, I'm not going anywhere. Go ahead, man. You could jump in. Because you, you actually said a good point with the cleaning. Um, the They do offer a... a a cleaner that you can get Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, any of that, mm -hmm. um, CVS, but it's a machine, uh, it's tablets that you use or a liquid that you put in. And that does help to break up the uh, the calcium buildup and lime scale, all that stuff that happens in there with the detergent and the water, um, <clears throat> kind of, you know, getting in there and settling and sitting. Uh, that's something to look out for. Just a little, that's an early tip because, uh, I think Brother Rich started to spill the beans a little bit, so I had to slide. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, I, I kept going, man. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, they um that and and um we'll get back to loading and all of that. So um, I go ahead, my good man. You can proceed. All right. So a couple uh, things that we can focus on. Looking at the picture, you can see in the front. It talks about the size, right? Um, that's something that we discussed a little bit earlier. Talking about the cubic feet, which is the interior of the machine, the size of the actual tub of the machine. The bigger the size, um, the larger the capacity, of course. Um, if you're adding a pedestal, it might add an additional 15 inches on there. Um, so you want to consider that. Make sure you have enough room to compensate for that. Um, and when we're talking about the cleaning, I don't know if you mentioned it. You probably did. Did you say that you're using the fresh or bleach to clean the inside of the washing machine? Um, I just said the tablets, which are fresh. Um, tablets right. or the liquid. Um, right. You can get them at your local... Uh, the supply store, uh, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, CBS, and near that. Well, even Walmart may have it, but you're looking for washing machine cleaner. The detergent for the clothes does not clean the machine. Keep that in mind. All right. Oh, you can also use bleach as well. All right. Oh, so bleach. Lots of bleach. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So, if you're looking at the machine, depending on the space that you have, let's look at this Whirlpool unit here. Oh, that's nice. Really nice. It, um, we gave it a grade on this particular unit on our site. Let me see if I can scroll through that a little bit. I might be able to find something. Um, we didn't give it that high of a grade, to be honest with you, man. Um, uh, no, because of the, um, I will say mostly because the functions was cool. We actually gave it a 3.75 and we said, you suck. So it's right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. that one was good. I yeah, like that one. Yeah. Yeah, so we did, we, we like some of the features. And that's the thing about appliances, man. We're like, I can like a lot of the functions and the features and how it operates. But if the warranty is not good, the price is not good, if they have a lot of issues with parts. And of course, we got to let the people know what's up, man. We cannot lie yeah. about the machine. But this particular one is really good as far as the functions and features. We talk about smart appliances. This is a, you can actually get this one in a smart appliance, right? So you can communicate with the unit download the app and work with the app. It also That's has cool. a smart dispenser, right? So if you look at the drawer that you see here, um, you pull that drawer out and you have to fill up the liquid dispenser. You can fill up to about 20, 20 loads. So you don't have wow. to keep the soap inside of the machine every time you just fill up the tank. You can get a bigger tank as well, but if you fill up the tank that comes with the unit and just hit start, it automatically adds soap to the joint, to the wash machine. And then when it fills dough, it needs to add on any more or if it's empty, then of course the machine will let you know that as well. 
All right. Um, and remote star, we talked about that. Um, and then it depending on the cycles and the settings that you might have as well. So it's, it's really good as the functions. I really give a really gave it a good grade as far as the functions, but it's everything else around it. So we can dive into some of these pros and cons when we're dealing with um, front load wash machines. So I'm going to read a couple of these joints and we can discuss them. It says pros for front load wash machines. Wash action provides through a thorough but gentle clean. Mm -hmm. Typically yeah. use less water per load compared to top load washing models. Higher spin speeds can help wick away moisture and lead to shorter dry times, often available with greater capacity than other, um, other types of washers, available in energy efficient and energy star models, available in compact or large capacity models. And it says save space by stacking select models, including stackable options from Whirlpool brand. All right, so any one of these that you want to dive into that catches your eye, man, go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. And uh, I usually like to roll with the um, that uh, uh, gentle, thorough clean. Uh, um, I completely agree with that. Um, I do own a front load washer. Okay. And I have to say, you know, when it's tumbling, because um, what it does is it tumbles those clothes instead of um, kind of beating them with the agitator. Um, I know we're going to go into the top low, so I don't want to say too much, but instead of beating it with the agitator, um, it just kind of tumbles the clothes, which is more gentler on the clothes instead of kind of beating them. Um, also, the uh, the spin speed on them uh, can be kind of a pro and con for me because okay. what you run into, and I know you've seen this before, that spin speed is like eight, 900, maybe 1,200 RPM. And they can get very loud um, if they're on the second floor of the home. A lot of times, if it's not on a solid like cement floor, it's pretty loud. But it will dang near spin them clean. Um, I've had we've had ours for uh, ten years. It's a Frigidaire Affinity. We've had that one for about ten years. I probably had to repair it like twice. You know, drain pump issues, things like that. Something to get stuck. Um, but overall, it's been great on all the clothes. I mean, I got clothes from 10 years ago, not one hole in it. Um, and they're not the most expensive. There ain't no Gucci and all that stuff up in there. It's some regular old fruit balloon, <laughs> dollar store T-shirts, and they last, you know. Um, so, um, and I also like the safe space and uh, the, the space saving idea with them, um, definitely, because, you know, a lot of people, they like to have that laundry style a laundry room look, you know, so they do save a lot of space by stacking them and then you can like put shelving and things next to it to help organize your, you know, your, your space. So I, 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 overall, I, I do enjoy them um, for those three options alone, just by themselves. Well, you stole one of mine. I was going to say the space, oh. the stackable joint, bro. Because a lot of customers <laughs> like that type of stuff, right? Like you said, it creates a lot of space, right? So you can actually add stuff on the side of it. But for mm -hmm. most techs, that's a nightmare, right? Because we don't really like stack do that plants is being stacked up because, of course, you got to take down the dryer. If it's gas or electric, you, you know, I mean, if it's electric, it's a lot easier. If it's gas, you don't really want to mess with too many gas appliances, turning off the gas and disconnecting and all that stuff. So when you're dealing with stackable units like these, I know it makes space for the customer. I know it's more convenient for the customer. But mm -hmm. as far as a service company that comes out, it's a headache. We do not yeah. like that type of stuff, man. But we can also talk about a little bit about the capacity if I'm looking at it, right? Um, a lot of the greater capacities is bigger than your top load units, right? So you can put more stuff inside of it. Um, mm -hmm. But like, it's, like we stated in any video, you want to be careful when you're loading your clothes. One of the benefits of dealing with learning about wash machines and different ones is understanding how to really load them, right? So you want to load it properly. You don't want to mm -hmm. overload the machine. You want to make sure that all the clothes are free, right? Yes. So you want to put yeah. clothes here, clothes there, but you want them to be able to move around freely. You don't want to overload it. And the great thing about the these machines, like this Whirlpool unit or, or any new appliances that's being made now, is that they're specific to what it is that you want to wash. And that's mm -hmm. the huge difference between washing clothes back in the day whenever we – had old machines, you just threw it all in there and hit start and just hit the normal cycle or hit heavy. <laughs> they are the smarter, right? Because they have to be because they can't handle certain weight depending on what you're putting inside the machine. 
right? So like right now they have towel settings that you could probably put about six to eight towels inside the washing machine, right? So you want to select the setting that says towels because your machine is smart enough to calibrate the weight inside of the machine before it actually starts. All right, so it doesn't start right away and start adding water. It starts turning and calibrating and then it starts advancing through the cycle. If you're gonna do bulky and bedding, right? Or a comforter set, you put it in those particular, particular cycles. You don't put it in a normal cycle because that's gonna damage your machine because bulky and bedding is two different type of calibration according to the rotation of the tub and the communication between the control board. So that's one of the things that we talk about these appliances are smarter. We like that feature but, um, in a lot of these appliances, but I just wanted to throw that out there as far as when you're dealing with appliances with front loaders, you want to be careful how you load them as well. Like you said, it can make a lot of noise if you put too much stuff inside the machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That thing will be dancing like uh, James Brown across the floor. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, baby. <laughs> you're right. <Yeah. laughs> All right, so we got some cons, man. So cons for the front load washing machines. Any of these might catch your eye. No deep water soak settings. Sometimes have longer wash cycles than top load washing machines. Might need to be cleaned more frequently. Uh, model prices can be higher. Uh, might need to bend over lower to access, though pedestals are available for select models. All right. Um, I'm already going to throw out there the Pedestals are a great idea if it actually benefits you as far as um, the, uh, you know, you got to maybe don't want to bend down as much like they say, and you use them as storage. You know, you put your uh, cleaning products in there, you know, maybe some stain cleaner and stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, your dryer sheets and all that. But, and I'm pretty sure you, you've you endured this, uh, Brother Rich, Um when you go to some houses and they have that front loader on the second floor of the house and it's on a pedestal and that thing goes into a high spin, it sounds like the, it's about to come through the ceiling and they actually, I've had complaints even recently uh, and within the last week. They say it sounds like it's about to come through the ceiling and the whole house feel like it's moving. And I say, yep, that's about right. <laughs> because they're very, you're taking about 50 pounds or so of clothing, you're putting water in it, and you're telling this machine to spin really fast. Mm -hmm. So it's going to sound like a jet line of taking off, you know, something like that, like a jet engine. So, you know, that's definitely something that I don't like. Thankfully for us, I was in a basement on the side of the floor. We don't really have to, you know, deal with that noise. But you can hear it when you go to the, you know, down there by the steps. It's right. loud. It's, you know, it, it's very loud. Um, I don't like the cost of them because um, they high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's expensive. And um, I'm dreading replacing ours, but it's a uh, got to do type of deal. So it is what it is. But I just feel like for, for what they're known, their failures that we're, um, we're familiar with that come all the time, like the tub, bearing, basket, stuff like that. Um, I know some of them have a lifetime warranty, but it'd be nice if they included the label with it, which ain't happening because we need to make some money too. By the way, you can check out uh, Rich's Appliance Repair or Tinker. We get the job done, both of us. Holler at us. We out there. We can help you. But um, um, that's really all I got because I don't want to take all of the good stuff away because I was looking at the clean more frequently, but I'll let you rock off on that, my friend. No, you're good. You're good. As far as like um, no deep water soak settings, um, that makes sense because the front loader, you don't want to fill it up with too much water because eventually it's going, it's going to start leaking out, right? So that's obvious. So if you like the deep water cleaning, you might have to consider the top load wash machine. Um, sometimes have longer wash cycles because, of course, um, the weight inside of the machine. So what can happen is your machine might start, when you look at it, 10 minutes left. But if the clothes are extremely heavy, then it's going to probably go for another 15, 20 minutes because it's trying to really trying to get all the water out. So when it does spin, it's not off balance. It's not damaging mm -hmm. the machine, nothing like that. So those are the things that at times, um, customers are going to have to consider depending on the weight of the machine. 
Well, let's like you talk about price. Let's look at the price with this particular unit, depending on the capacity, oh, yeah. right? On average, you're looking at about fifteen hundred dollars. That's the MSRP for sale for the sale for four point three cubic feet, fourteen thirty nine, right? Four point five. You're looking at ten seventy nine, and then of mm. course five point zero, which is the newest one. We have not reviewed this one yet. I can't wait to get my hands on it because I love mm. the digital display in, in in front of the door. So hopefully that's you can dope. see that. That's pretty dope, man. That's real that nice. Black on black is made. Yeah. Wow. So you're talking nice. about 1649. So on average, you're gonna spend there near 1500 to replace your washing machine. Like I said, we talked about the low and go load and go feature on this particular unit, right? You got an um, XL dispenser, and then this is the biggest one, which is the XL plus dispenser. All right, so it all depends on which one you get, which is a smart dispenser. But yeah, so that's pretty cool. We can dive into the top load agitator washers, right? Um, so we can go into those a little bit, talking about top load washing machine, man. So how do you feel about these new modern Whirlpool top load washing machines that's out on the market? Let us know how you feel. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it's almost like when they say you got that old thing back. <laughs> um, oh yeah what we even jump, yeah because you know a lot of people we about to go into the impellers after this and a lot of people don't see this agitator in that machine and they have a fit mm -hmm. they don't see that tower agitator they say how is it going to clean and um yes that agitator does play a role it helps to move them close but once again you can't overload it you can't just stuff everything in there and expect it to be clean it still should be able to move loosely in there um, but I, I still, I'm, I'm old school with it, brother. Rich, I, I, I always like that agitator in the top two. I'm one of them. Uh, it's just something about that. It just, it just makes you feel reassured that that something's actually moving the top portion versus just the bottom. Yeah. Um, so I would say these were probably uh, with people of our generation and a uh, little bit older generation they probably will prefer these some of the times i actually do like the other style we'll get we're getting into next but um these just they, they just give you that little confirmation once you see that top of it just going because you can see the top of the clothes moving instead of what the impeller does so um overall I, i'll still say they're good um they get the job done just as always read the manual and um it ought to be um it ought to work like it should uh, what do you think, bro, Rich? Where you, where you at with? Um, I like the agitator. Um, if I had to choose between the agitator and the impeller, I would go with the agitator. I like the old school look. Um, for this particular unit, um, we gave it. This is when we first started on YouTube, brother. So, oh, I'm wow. not gonna lie. To you. When we did this video back in the day, the music was so loud. Um, so we did it a year ago. So this is the one with the mean mug, whirlpool top low wash. Oh. We gave it a a mean mug. So we probably gave it, of course, less mm. than a four. Um, I wasn't putting the grades up at the time. This is me just learning how to really do YouTube. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But either way, the grade that we gave this particular unit is low. We didn't really like it. And um, the main reason was because of the transmission or the gear case that we see in this particular unit. It goes up pretty bad. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's faulty. It breaks. We just, as far as it's not durable. Um, when I see this type of machine, I kind of hate working on it because it's so simple, but yet complex because the communication between the motor and the control or the transmission and the control sometimes just throws it off and causes the machine to act in a wacky way that sometimes it doesn't make sense technically when you're dissecting the appliance and try to work on it. So that's what sometimes is confusing. But on this particular model, it does have a deep wash, right? Um, nice. Deep wash cycle okay. that you can select. You do have um, a faucet. So this is what this little brush is for, right? So you use the little faucet on the left, press this button where the oh, curve is, oh, yeah. and the water comes out, and then you can pick this little brush up. But the thing, the great thing about the brush is you can actually put um, detergent in it. So when you press down on it on a certain way or the detergent comes out and you can pre-treat the clothes before you actually start washing. So there's some benefits to it. I'm not going to say it's, it sucks overall. I'm, even though I did say it sucks overall. So it does suck, but it does have 
some features on it, right? So I'm not going to lie yeah. to the people. We're not going to lie to the public. That's just not who we are. But at the same time, if you was to get this on it like for like 400 bucks, I would say go with it. But if you got to yeah. spend seven, eight, nine hundred bucks, no, I would not say go with it because that's just too high. But like I said, I like the top load wash machines um, with the agitator. It's a lot better. You can see the inches is just about the same as far as 40 inch. Um, and talking about the cubic feet and all that stuff, this is how it looks. You can get the wash machine and the dryer um, as well. So we can dive into some of the pros and cons. Quick, quick question, Rich. Quick yeah. question. This is a little off for the grid of what we said. The, that's the that's the one that has that that short gear case. Does it have it has the actuator instead of the, the drive motor? This one has that too. Has what? Does this one have the um the actuator? The, uh, actuator instead of like the drive motor and coupler. It has the actuator motor on this one. Yes, that's okay. the one. That's that's why you said it's okay. I see what right. I was looking. I'm like, hold up, but I, I haven't seen any lately, so I just you know. Oh, you know what? Does it have that, it has that easy lowering thing to the spring that makes it lower down softly? The lid. Um, the spring that lowers down softly? Yeah, it's like when you go to close it, when it get almost closed, it just slows down. Like, it's I very know. light. I don't, I don't know. But I, all right, that's a different story. I ain't going to get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah. I just you know it sucks to change out those the spring. That's all. It's not that bad, but it sucks. You got to do a lot of work before it springs. All right, so some Never of the pros and cons working. to the top load agitator washers. Just wash, wash action, man, provides a thorough clean, generally has shorter wash times than front load wash machines. Water levels can usually be adjusted. Deep water wash and soak options on select models. All right, so we talked about that. Um, familiar functionality. This style has been around for many years. Models generally have a lower price point versus front load wash machine. All right. I like that. <laughs> um, like I said, you can dive into it, whichever one. I'll piggyback off of what um, you don't, don't select. Um, well, um, we, we're pretty much on a thoroughly clean part for any of them. We want it to clean. So we know that's what they're doing. That's how they're able to sell them so well. Um, I like the price point on it uh, just because and and especially nowadays with the uh times with things you know some some factories and stuff closing up stuff like that um with the way the market is with the expense of gas and all of that um it's nice to get something that's more affordable um for the time being even knowing that it may not last more than five years at some point at least you would have something for now for one to three until things pick up a little bit better or maybe your finances are in a situation where you can spend a little bit more um, I love the familiar, the familiar functions on that because it's just like permanent press mm -hmm. done. It ain't asking you, hey, uh, do you want this on gentle, soft, high speed, spin? All oh, it don't ask you all these questions. It get right down to it. It tells you, hey, if you use this cycle, you're going to get slow and fast agitation. If you go on here, it's going to be slow, slow. If you go here, it's going to be fast, slow. You go here, it's going to be fast, fast. So, you know, it, it's very cut and dry for the most part. But I do know, um, like you were saying, Brother Rich, they have gotten a lot more advanced. But I know in general, that's kind of where we're getting at with that. So um, that's pretty cool. Okay. And uh, the water levels, I don't know, man. Because some of them, they, they got that automatic setting a lot of times nowadays. Like that that automatic thing is taking over. So what, what do you think, Brother Rich? Is that is that accurate now for, or maybe that's for the lower end ones where you can adjust them just because I know a lot of them, they got that. It just fills up when it, when it spins, it fills the clothes and all that stuff. Well, it depends on the soil level. So now they, instead of having, they'll sometimes have the hot, heavy, medium, um, low, depending on the soil level in the washing machine. So we already know that it's not really giving out as much water like before. Um, yeah. So it depends on the model, because um, like I said, with these newer models, they deal with a lot of sensing. So mm -hmm. some of them do have the automatic feel where it judges it, judges the weight of the machine. And if it's a heavy load, it's going to add a heavy load portion of water inside the machine. 
All mm -hmm. right, so it depends on the model. Um, it varies from model to model. Um, so, you know, it depends on which one you get. Um, but the benefit of having this particular machine or a lot of the new ones, like I said, you can still get a combination of the traditional machine where you get the deep wash or the deep fill, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of water inside the machine. Your, you know, your clothes are drenched and all that types of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can get, I want to save energy and I want to save water setting without just adding the deep water fill and stuff like that, all right? So that's the benefit of having a top loader in comparison to having the front load, front load wash machine because you know the front load doesn't do a deep, deep, deep fill. Um, yeah, no deep so, fill. You know, and like you said, the price point is a lot cheaper depending on the models, but we can talk about some of the pricing as well because I'm sure it's going to probably give us pricing on mm -hmm. like how much this particular model is going to cost you. Um, some of the cons for the top load washing machine generally uses more water than front load water models. That's something that you want to think about. Less room for bulky items to move around inside. And of course, it cannot be stacked with a dryer. All right, so that's some of the cons there. Do you want to elaborate a little bit or is it self explanatory uh, Yeah, I'm going to definitely say do not stack your top load washer on top of your dryer. That's not good. That's that's. That's the I don't know why that's doing that, brother. If you're doing that, something ain't right. It definitely ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, that's 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 actually dead on uh and doing that advertising for these things because yeah, it, it doesn't have a lot of room for bulky items, you know, things can get twisted and tangled together uh really badly inside of those to the point where it could possibly start tearing your clothing. Uh you definitely don't want that because they're wet um you know and it's wet and it's uh, a little more easier for it to wind together i don't know why but it's something with the water and the motion of the, the tub and all that i mean things would be tied together and a knot and it's not really clean at that point that's when you pull out your clothes and it's clean on one part and then it look kind of like tied out kind of like how my shirt look and it's dirty hair and clean hair dirty hair and clean, you know you'd be in trouble man <laughs> um but otherwise yeah i mean uh, I I don't really say much else about them. That's pretty much straight to the point about them. It was dead on with that information. That's pretty much all you get out of it. But they're straightforward. It's, it's clean cut. They don't they don't ask you too many questions unless you start getting the more expensive uh, top load. Once they start getting expensive, then it's going to be like you can start it and you in Canada and your, 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 your washing machine is in Baltimore and you can start that joint. <laughs> It got All, right. Wi -Fi. All right, let's see what the price is for this one. What do you think the price is? I'm going to just go ahead and let you go oh, ahead and on the oh. guys. What do you think uh, you want to spend for this? It's a 4.7 cubic feet top load washing machine with pre-treat station. How much do you think it's going to cost you for this I'm going to say <laughs> $650. $650? Stop it. 779 but originally it's a stack, right? It's so a, I, a stack I knew it was going to be a thousand dollars. Huh? It's a thousand dollars for that. Right. That's what I'm saying. But you can get it on sale for 779 That's why I say, that's why we gave it the grade that we gave it. It has a lot of benefit as far as the features and capabilities, but the price is outrageous because, again, the yeah. price is outrageous. The product and the part is outrageous because it breaks down so often. That's why we gave it the grade that we gave it. And you thought oh, that's that was amazing, cool. man. That, yeah. that, that, I mean, that just blew my I'm like, 650 will be decent because I'm looking at the, the style. You know, yeah. we all about looks and stuff um, in this new generation mm -hmm. of uh, creating appliances. We don't want it to look like appliances. We want it to just look good, like a like, you know, a fine uh, piece of jewelry or something. You know, you want it to look just smooth and stunning. And and so when you, I get caught up in that kind of individual because it's like, oh, man, it's like the black stainless look, got the glass top, probably a nice design on the on the display. And then you go to use it and it's garbage. So, right. <laughs> so I'm like that transmission, man. Wow. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Um, I don't have no words. I usually got something to say. <laughs> well, that's why I'm glad we do the reviews. Like I said, we break it down in ways at Consumer Report. Wow. Check out our reviews. We do some amazing reviews. 
Um, and that's why we break it down the way that we do, because we can't really just only fo focus on what is capable of doing as far as the functions. Like we got to break it down so that people understand that when we go to homes, this is what we're seeing on this particular machine. This is true. When, we, when we show up to, the, to your home and we might shake our head, we might scratch the back of our necks because we know like, yo, it's going to be a long day messing with this raggedy machine right here. Right. It's funny you said that, right? Because it's like when you come in and you say, oh, this is so-and-so. Okay. They'd be like, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because <laughs> people instantly get defensive. Like, what, what does right. that mean? What does that mean? Like, it doesn't, it just means we, we're probably starting to register um, certain failures on there by us having so much time in the game. Check us out, which is appliance repair, tanker appliance repair. We out here to do the thing, um, get you straight. But, um, yeah, it, when we see certain items, we've got a lot of skin in the game until now. We're not, not no bragging rights needed or none of that stuff. But we've been around for quite a while, and certain symptoms you will see um, repetitively with, with certain models. It's just like any type of anything that's built. Like if you get a certain car, they, you know, this car is known to have a bad gasket on the old uh, filter or something, you know, or you, you know, you get a certain lock, and lock is known to burn out. Uh, certain parts rust out fast. You know, it's just one of those things. We become um, tradesmen of this uh, this great skill, and, and and we just know what breaks. It, yeah. It's just one of them things. It's like you come on and say, "Oh, is this model? Yeah, it's probably going to need a transmission." Like the trash we just was looking at. Now, I shouldn't say that. It wasn't trash, trash. But <laughs> I ain't buying that one now. I, I ain't buying. It. I was yeah, trying to be cheap. <laughs> we put a thumbs down on it. We put a thumbs down. All right, so this portion of the video we're going to focus on the impeller portion of this video oh all right so that's the one with this the plate. is yeah top Wash load plate. impeller washers all right so we can look at the models the same thing and, and one of the things that we can say um as far as the new appliances top load units um they are giving you the option of the impeller or the actual agitator all right, so that's the benefit to that, depending on your style that you like as well. So when we talk about selecting an appliance, you got to know what it is that you want. Um, this is something that we express um, over the time of us doing these videos is really understanding what it is that you want. Do you want all the bells and whistles? Do you want it to have deep feel? Do you want an agitator or an impeller? Um, right. So you want to have where the, the lid is glass and you can actually look through the window um, off your washing machine, right? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it's, it's a lot <laughs> cooler to choose an appliance other than just going to the store and just say, I want one, unless you just really just want a basic washing machine just to wash your clothes, yo. Outside yeah, of really. that, you know, if you're looking for something that you want to spend some money on, you want to be, you want to know what you spend your money on and you want to know what's the best out there and you want to make sure that you have um, enough information in the appliance, just like buying a car, so that you can buy what it is that you really, really want. All right, so we can yeah. talk about some of the top load pros, man. Wash provides a thorough, gentle clean. We talk about that. Generally mm -hmm. uses less water than the older agitator models. Deep water wash and soak options on select models. More room in the wash basket for bulky articles and easier loading, unloading. More large capacity options are usually available. Available in energy efficient and energy star models. And models generally have a lower price point versus front load washers. All right, so you can dive into one of those. I'm gonna probably let me jump first into this one. Yeah, you go first. You go first. All right, I'm gonna just go first. A couple of things that I pay attention to. One, where it says more room in the wash basket for bulkier articles and easier loading and unloading. All right, so that's one of the benefits of having the impeller. With the machine that we're gonna show you guys on this particular video. It has the, the machine that you can use the impeller or the agitator. All right. So I don't know if you noticed the new Whirlpool machine that you can just. Work on that. Well, well, this new machine, we did a review on it. We really didn't like it either. <laughs> All right. Man, they, they got to step their game up, man. I'm being honest. They're really, really. Like flipping on the washes, though. I mean, but man, you have an impeller that you can actually snap it and pull it up. And it becomes an impeller, or you can snap it back on, and it's an agitator, right? Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna show you what it's like, but we like that you get more space, more room with the impeller. So that's one. 
Um, mm -hmm. Generally uses less water than the older agitator models. So that's one of the things that I really never really considered as far as how much water goes inside the machine, the difference between mm -hmm. the agitator and the impeller. Um, <clears throat> Didn't know that was there was generally a difference between the two. I thought it would have still been the same. That's something yeah. that I've done today. But um, but yeah, but just those two really stuck out to me. Um, the bulkiness of the articles and the loading size and the space that you have, and of course the um, saving water uh, more than the older agitator models. So mm -hmm. what stands out to you as far as pros? Um, definitely the gentle plane once again. Um, I, I I I stand by that um, that I'm, I'm all in for the longevity and if you if your clothes getting beaten up real bad it just ain't gonna last you know I don't want to go buy a really nice t-shirt and I got it you know it's beat up in in, in two months because I didn't wore the wore the heck out of it and kept washing um, also I'm I'm agreeing with the the space saver portion of that because um, mostly you know they kind of got the same attributes as the one we just spoke about. But I like that extra space in it. Now, that's when the customer concern comes in because they're like, well, how is it going to clean my clothes without, you know, having that? Once again, if I have an agitator, you, you cannot overpack it because you see a big space in the middle now. Um, if you put it in at the correct capacity, meaning that you're not just packing clothes or sheets and, and all that, it will wash pretty well. I've received so many complaints about the Impella Salade. People say, I don't know why I bought it. Um, this thing cleans nothing. It doesn't do its job. All of these things. And I'm pretty sure if it did not clean at all, it would not be able to be marketed. I can guarantee it because it would be a dead end machine. Everybody would turn their backs on it and be like, look, there's no way we're buying this, this trash right here. Um, so I, I actually like them. I, I would probably not get it because like I said, I like the old school, even though I don't want my clothes beat up, right. but I would probably wash a lot of clothes on in general with the towel because with the towel, at least it, 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 it pushes them up versus that impeller, which it, it, it's trying to, but the impeller is more like pushing water through the clothes versus the agitator, which is beating them kind of, if that makes sense to y'all. So it makes just, logical sense. But one yeah. of the things I wanted to jump on that you talked about a little bit is the loading portion of it, right? Yes. You said yes. when you're loading your wash machine, the clothes has to be free so that the water can hit it, so that it can move around, so that it can mix in between the water and the detergent and the actuation, whether it's an impeller or an agitator. So you want to actually load your clothes around the agitator and around the impeller. Do not throw your clothes just in the machine and dump it on top of it. It's not going to wash. It's not going to clean. All right. So that's one of the things that we stress in a lot of the videos that we do is really instructing customers how to really load their machine because it's important how you load the machine around mm -hmm. the unit. So go around it. It's like the left, front, right, back, however you want to look at it. Just go around it like that and load your clothes periodically in these four different corners. And that will cause your clothes to wash a lot more efficiently. So I just had to throw that point in there before we moved on. Um, some of the cons generally use more water than the front load models, more or less than the older agitator models. Loads can become off balance if not loaded carefully. See, same thing we just talked about. Um, mm -hmm. Heat fill may not be available in all models and cannot be stacked with a dryer. All right. So yeah. once again, Definitely don't put the top loader on top of a dryer. <laughs> you just, you don't do that. And and you know what? I want to piggyback on that. The load off balance, like you said, evenly distributing the clothes around. How many times, uh, Brother Richard, have you stepped into a situation there, sir, and somebody put one towel inside of that and they keep wondering why the machine is banging? Or they put one um, bath mat or something there, which I do not recommend to run through your machine. Do not put mats in there but um we'll say some things for the end of the road but now to put it out there don't put things like that in there because that the fibers of that mat breaks down and it gets in the machine and, and your drain pump stops your drain pump from working it's not not something you want to do that take it to a like a laundromat or something something more commercial that's just used to it has a system that's built to handle all that debris and stuff but do not just place one pair of jeans in one towel because that thing's going to fill it with water and when it goes to spin it, it's mm. going to be heavy on one side and it's going to pull the machine with that one 
that one thing in it. So you want to at least put two, two, two towels, two pairs of pants, two, two something. Or if you're doing a, a, a nice size blanket, you can just fit it around nice and evenly. But if you just throw it in there and it can just move to one side, you're about to have a problem. And then that's what you can call Rich's Appliance Repair or Tank Appliance Repair, because we got you. Yeah. I'll ask. And those who are on the line watching the video, always make sure you can leave a comment, any suggestions or anything that you might want to have. And also like the video. Got to like the video, share the video as well. All right, so that helps us a lot with the YouTube algorithms. Now your friends, right. your family, yeah. everybody. Anybody. Everybody. All right, so Anybody. let's the joint. You're looking at same price, just about $1,000. That's crazy. Depends cubic feet, 4.8, 4.8, and if it's 5.3. I told you they high. You know, they no, that is rough. That's, they not 1500 but, you know, uh, 1100 well, I mean, 1300 that's, that's a lot of thread. I mean, straight up with, it, with that 1100 that 1200 I'm going to just get a front loader. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to just get a front loader because it's, I don't see the value of them, especially with those transmissions. Yeah. I don't see the value. I don't, I, the, the, at least you know what, not unless it has a stator. If that has a stator in it, I might go with it. And for those of you um, who are trying to figure out what we're talking about, if you don't know, the stator is more like an electromagnet type of motor. It, it's actually using a plate and some uh, motor, um, it uses windings, and it's a plate that sit over it and that controls how fast it spin versus a transmission that has like a drive motor in it that controls the transmission. So this one has less contact, like it doesn't really virtually have no contact, right? Right, Rich? Like, because the, the stator just sits on it, it's magnetized. Mm -hmm. And when that spins, there's no gears or nothing in there to burn out. It just spins around the magnets. So it never makes contact. But the other one is gears fitting together, and those gears get stripped and all that stuff. It, it's a mess. So if it had a stator motor, I would probably go for it. Because it, it is kind of dope with that black stainless. I, I got to say that, that black, I, I'm hooked on that right now, man. It, it got me a little bit. Man, I mean, but uh, look, when I go into the in the in the plant store to review these joints, I be mesmerized by how they look as well. So I'm not gonna yeah, act like that's this. very stylish, man. You know what I mean? Because the way that they look, like this is not how a washing machine look. It's almost like when you're looking at washing machines now, it's like, bro, you be like, man, this is tight. This is dope. Yeah. Like you probably see that for a car, or you say that for a big screen TV. But you don't know me say that about your washing machines. You know what I mean? No. But yeah, but they they pretty dope though. I kind of like that. Um, we're yeah, going to dive into a couple of these other joints. I was telling you about the Impella. So this is here, oh. the two-in-one. So you'll press in on this little interior here, and it pulls it up. So now uh, it's the Impella, right. you can snap it back down, and now it becomes an agitator. All right, so I yeah, so um, did do a review on that joint recently. Let me see what we got. I think we gave it a pretty bad grade. Here you go right here. Two-in-one. Agitator, we gave it a 3.2. 3.2. Yeah, so you know how bad you need to wash some clothes, you're going to buy that. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't really like it. Um, like I said, it has some great benefits to it, but we just, we didn't really like it like that, man. But we can dive into some of the stuff, the pros and cons of either one. Um, removal, um, agitator provides flexibility. Greater flexibility, no need to choose between agitator and Impala. Yeah, they try to make it sound cool. Huh? That, that's sound like more of a sales pitch to me. Yeah, it does. Can remove <laughs> agitator to wash bulky items like comforters. Provides all the pros of both Impala and agitator models. Um, cons generally use more water. Loads can become off balance if not loaded carefully and can't be stacked. All right, so yeah. this one is thirteen forty nine. This is Bruh. a one removable joint, 5.2 to 5.3 cubic feet. Well, it does have a nice large capacity, though. That's nice. Yeah, the capacity is large, but it's a unit, man, for that? Bobby unit. All right, so another another machine is the stacked laundry centers, right? So oh, yeah. this is a laundry center. This is how the laundry centers look. It's not a stacked unit. It seemed like it's a stacked unit because it dries up top and it washes at bottom but it's an all-in-one unit, all right? So we see a lot of these, man. On average, these can be pretty expensive. I'll yes. say, um, I know the LG launch, launch um, 
LG Walsh Towers, you're talking about two grand for those, but those are like all the appliances, man. When you're talking about an appliance that looks good and that's like fully loaded, that's what you're man. talking about. See, I haven't run across. I, I run across what we got about right here. Right. Um, I do a lot of uh, rental properties, and um, uh, I shouldn't even just say rental property, but a lot of apartments, rental properties, condos, um, things of that nature. I, I see a lot of those in there, and um, they are they are nice. And the the, the real battle um, that you run into is what happens when one stops working. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time, I got it. But they they do fix it because it's like you got a whole washing machine out there and they get drying. But we gonna fix it that drive. I'm not spending fifteen to two grand for them. Um, but they they're really nice. I have to say they, these are really really nice. I, I and the reason why I also say rental property is because of hey you know they 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 do have a lot of endurance in them. Um, yeah. I usually see them and they last for quite a long time. So if you got people moving in. You know, on a yearly basis and all that, you don't know how, uh, how can I say, they might have a larger family or a smaller family, but they have a good endurance. I've, I've seen them puppies kick like a horse. So just put a little information out there for you. Okay. Um, I do agree with that. They do last between the 15 and 20 years. Yeah, um, they are a lot simpler as far as appliances compared to the new ones that's out in the market now. So um, just about in anything in general, keep it simple, stupid. When you do that, it's a lot less stuff to break and it's gonna, it's normally gonna last you a lot longer. All right, when we're talking about pros for the stack laundry centers, fits into smaller spaces and those requiring vertical stacking, offers a stacked option with the top load wash machine, no, no stacking kit needed, usually lower price than purchasing a washer and dryer separately. All right, so what comes to mind when you're talking about the pros that stick out um, to you? It's only well, a few. They, they, yeah, they, they kind of just nailed it. They, they just keep being repetitive, saying smaller space. Um, yeah. I would say the pro is you um, you basically are right. It, it gives you that pleasure of that right there action. Um, if you're washing clothes, it, make, it just seems like it's faster. It's right there. You know, you load one, you fill in, you know, you got clothes drying, you put something in the bottom so you can be folding and all that. It, it seems like it's just a little more timely. You're not bending down as much. So you're not like, you know, how you got to bend down into the front loader and all that stuff um, to get them out. You know, it's kind of like good exercise, actually, you know. <laughs> it's like that. Um, you got it all in one. Um, so typically they're compatible. So yeah. that wash is going to spin out at a certain rate. And then when you put it in a dryer, it shouldn't take that long to dry because they're designed to work in unison versus if you had a mismatch uh, pair. Um, basically, that's it. Uh, they're pretty simplified. Um, I I just, I like the style. I like the endurance of those mostly. Like they, they should have put that in there, uh, but you can't say it because, you know, you buy one a day and it broke up, you know, 30 days later. <laughs> Uh, you're not going to be like, hey, Marquise, that, you, you're wrong, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. You're not going to be like, Marquise, you're right. It works for a really long time if it breaks within um, 30 days. So um, I would say overall they're compatible. They're good for space, they keep saying. And um, that's really pretty much it. Here's your benefit of two. I agree with, totally with everything you say. Um, the spacing is where I think it's a huge benefit. Um, Mm -hmm. because again, it fits a unique space. Normally you'll see them like in a closet, like you come in in as a technician and you have to work on an appliance that's inside the closet with limited amount of space Mm -hmm. and it's stackable too. Um, You know, and and if it's in a pan or drip pan, so if your washing machine leaks, it leaks into the pan. Um, As a technician, when you see those, it can be daunting. Um, It can be intimidating. Um, oh, yeah. Of course, normally you would need someone to help you to repair those. Um, as far as the dryer, man, as long as I have space to get up to the top and reach it with my step stool, I'm fine by myself knocking it out. Um, the biggest issue is the washing machine. If you got to replace like a motor or a transmission, something like yeah. that, that's, so. that's a little bit more more heavy duty work that you got to do. But at the same time, it fits a unique space. And that's why most people like it, because you just buy this one unit 
you get the washer, you get the dry. I mean, you get the washer, you get the dryer up top, then that's it. And it, like you said, it lasts a really long time. On average, I would say they probably last between 10 and 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. I know the lifespan of appliances is about 10 years. It's difficult for you to get 10 years out of a front load or a top load unit that's separate because again, for some reason, it just seems like it's not made as strong and it's not made as durable, but um, you know, it's, it's good for spacing. It's good for spacing in apartment complexes and stuff like that. I usually, um, um, I gotta say, I haven't, um, I have not yet, knock on wood, because it might come this, this week now, um, I haven't had to replace a transmission on one of them uh, well, I have. recently. In the last three years, how many would you say you've done? In three years? Yeah, in three years. Because I don't, I, I've rarely about, ever had. In three years, I probably did about maybe two or three. See, now that speaks for itself. Yeah. Right there. Because I, 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 I probably did. I had an older style where I think it had a, uh, I think I had to put a belt on one, something, mm -hmm. something like that, a belt yeah. pop. Belt but pop. I, I don't usually have any issues, but most of the time it's the dryer side, maybe a thermal fuse or something. I run across the GE one, that mm -hmm. one um, that had a thermal fuse problem, but that's been related with the dryer. Uh, we'll discuss that on another day, but um, we're sticking to washes today <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 the, and, the, and the stack units or whatever. Yeah. All right. So couple says typically has fewer options and features than other types of washers because it's simpler. It's basic. You want to wash mm -hmm. your clothes, throw it in there, get it done. Can have a smaller range of capacity than other type styles. That's um, that's one of the things that is true. You can get it in a size that's like I've seen people with I sometimes I'm shocked to see how small it is. I'm like, bro, this a wash machine shouldn't be this small. But when you get to it and you got to work on it, of course, you got to instruct the customer to do what? not to overload it. It's not a yeah. normal size machine, so you cannot put normal size clothing inside of here. And another con is that you can't separate the units for alternate configurations. All right, so it's in laundry center, all in one unit. You cannot separate it. So if the dryer is dead and cannot be repaired and done, you gotta get a new unit, or a new laundry center, um, the dryer and the washer. All right. So another quiz I'm gonna got for you, brother. What um what do you think the price is for this joint? Oh man. Um, Good. I, hopefully you get it wrong. <laughs> um, you got me breathing a little nervously over here, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 1600. like price is right. I'm gonna say 1675.29. All right, you are you right. 1600. Hey. There we go. The, the, the higher, the bigger one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and okay. Like in either case, let's look at the top load washing machine that we just looked. That's that's the price of the top load by yeah, itself. Basically. Get it all the yeah. 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 I would throw that joint right in the basement. I would get that stackable and call it a day. Yeah. Because that other joint, I ain't no way. Oh, boy. I see this one right here. We're going to have all fun with this one. one. All right. We can talk about this uh, for a little bit because um, all in one combo washer and dryer. All right. Um, it's the machine that does all in one. So a whirlpool has this one. I've never Whirl never oh, worked okay. on a whirlpool one. I've worked on an LG one before. LG or Kenmore. The, the Kenmore made by um, LG. Right. So yeah, okay. And either that same exact unit. Um, but yeah. I've never worked on a whirlpool one. So this is unique. And like I said, I like the digital display in there. That's dope. Um, can talk about some of the pros and cons um as far as working on this unit space efficiency the de um, design combines two appliances into one whirlpool offers a ventless design that can be installed nearly anywhere compact oh. models available typically more options and setting than stack laundry centers and no need to transfer loads from one machine to another all right, so that's some of the, the pros. All right, so when we're dealing with the LG units, so I can dive into a couple of these joints. Um, the LG Laundry Center, one of the things that customers say about it is when you're washing your clothes, it's great that you're able to just stick your clothes inside the machine, hit the washing machine settings, and you can set it to dry at the same time so that it just seamlessly runs one, one um, setting into another, right? But the thing is, it can take up to about four to six hours to do laundry, yes. right? So I understand yes. if you're in a, a dormitory in college 
or you're in a apartment complex or you're running out of an apartment and it's limited in, in the amount of space, this is beneficial um, to be able to use. But again, if you're washing clothes, who wanna wash one load for six hours, bro? There so that's what I'm saying like at times, it's a great thing, but they gotta find a way to bring the timing down a little bit so that it can benefit the customer for using it. I mean, you won't use it because you got to wash your clothes, but man, Look, four yeah. to yeah. six hours is a long time. And then of course you're talking about the ventless um, portion of it where you don't have to connect the vent, right? Yeah. Um, that even though the lint can still get clogged up inside the dryer and have the same effect as overheating and not heating properly, it's ventless. And that's the benefit that the fumes um, is, um, dissipates inside of the dryer because it might add a little bit of moisture inside of it to um, mm. get rid of the fumes inside the dryer as well. But the ventless is pretty good that you don't have to have an exhaust vent that leads outside or you don't have to have that little bucket of water on the side, um, the portable vent. You don't have to do any of that. It comes ventless. So that's all I had to say about that, Jeremy. I don't know if you want to add anything to it. Um, for those, um, I mostly see those in like older apartment buildings that don't really have uh, ability to vent outside okay. um, and, and basements where they are unable to penetrate the brick with a foundation is pretty nice. But you hit on something that I'm surprised you didn't uh, say a little extra. Uh, now you say, um, uh, Mr. Richard there, uh, it's going to wash for about six hours. So what you think somebody going to do knowing that this thing will run for about six hours? They're going to stuff a lot of clothes in it, and they're going to get them all clean and washed. So I get complaints about it not being dry and the clothes still being dirty. Yep. And then when you see when you see what they did with the thing, I'm like, let me see your clothes look. You open up the door, and it is packed in yeah. like sardines, and it ain't even no room for the water to move. So... It's a great idea, but it, it it's it's in more of those situations where you probably, you know, you're going to start washing that morning and you just keep washing. So everything's clean and you just wash as you go. It's like a machine like that. Or if you need to be in a compact space where you don't have the area. Uh, like recently I had one when it was a small, um, it was a small apartment and they had it in a really good position. It was like, all in one area with the stove that, you know, uh, had the, the washer dryer there and all that. It was a really small area where they could actually do all of this stuff. And then it was a really, it was a nice, nice place, actually, really nice place. But they just didn't have a lot of place for utility uh, stuff in there. So it's wonderful. It's compact. It fits right up under the counter. You know, it's right next to the dishwasher and everything, just right in line. So it's kind of like you got your own little appliance center right there. You got the fridge, dishwasher, washing machine, stove, all that stuff right there, microwave. Um, and uh, kind of reminds me of my daughter's little appliance setup. <laughs> kind of think about it. I wonder if they got that from Fisher Price. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, that I, I personally, um, I wouldn't get one. I just, I, I've, I haven't had the best reviews with those at all from any customer that has them. And it's very few that have them. So I don't see that many in the field, but when I see them, they usually overpack with clothes, they don't dry well, and the clothes don't clean as well. That's that's my skinny on that thing. So um, it's until I get one that we can actually dissect, then I'm staying away from it. All right, so we can talk about cons. Can't wash a load while another dries. Generally offers less capacity. Um, then stand, then some standalone options and dry cycle times may be longer. All right. So like I said, overall, it's going to take you a minute. But the price for this joint, you're looking at $17.49. That's like you said, you, you, these appliances are getting up there. They're yeah, getting like, up there. But it's oh, no, that's like cell phones, though. man. Yeah. That much phone. Yeah, it's more than a cell phone. That's why people are getting these appliances repaired because they're spending like two grand on it. I get them repaired. You don't have no options. But, bruh, I'm, well, see, in that one, I see for that one, that one's more like a conditional thing, like in a situation where you really don't have space or something or you're trying to be, you know, extra techie and be like, oh, I got all in one. Well, if you got all in one, you need to get about two of them joints and sit them next to each other so you can <laughs> get your laundry done. You need to get about two, three all in ones, lock sure. them up, 
you'll be good to go because it's wow, man, that joint almost two grand. Wow, you showing oh, me some stuff. With, like with taxes. It is totally. two grand with taxes. So, God, yeah, leave, man. Not. I ain't been in the store in a while. So, uh, you uh, when, when me saying these prices, I'm just like, gosh, man, oh, yeah. wow. That's why we do these reviews and we see that. That's why I keep telling you why we grade them the way we grade them. Because if you look at a price like this and you got another machine from LG product, that's probably going to give it to you for 12. I'm going to give it a bad grade for the price because I can get it cheaper. I'm not going to say get it get the most expensive one because mathematically that makes no sense at all. Right. But, you know, this yeah. is what we do at Consumer Bonds Report, man. We were real bosses, man, and let y'all know what's up. That joint, but. Had a folded clothes for almost two grand. I wanted to be like the Jetsons. That joint deliver your clothes to you like uh Rosie, the robot on that. It is crazy. All right, so we got another one: compact and portable wash machines. Um, Easy. not really a um, I don't see a lot of portable machines, to be honest with you, man. Um, I don't think I've ever even worked on a portable machine. Um I have. I've, I've, had, I've done a couple. All right, I'm gonna leave that up to you because you're the expert on that, man. So what's your thoughts on that? Um, a lot of times now, the cool part about the portables is once again, you can get that stack action. And when okay. I've seen them, they, they were a, a little bit cheaper, actually, when I did service them. Excuse me. You can get like the portable um, washer in the bottom and put like a little dryer up top. Um, it gives you that same um, treatment, except for with this one, you know, you can kind of just hook it up in the kitchen real quick or hook it up to a spigot real quick. Um, let it do its thing, um, and you can put it away, put it in the closet or something, so that once again you're saving space. Because um, you may not have a, a location where you can hook it up to a direct source where you can leave it sitting. So you can just like hook it up in the kitchen, let it run, wash, drain, take it out, put it somewhere else to dry, hang your clothes up. So this is a really good space saving type of item. Um, when I serviced it, I, I, the last one I did, I did like a control board on one and see how they got, it. got a stack right there. It's that, it's that whole, um, you, you can do it just like that. Um, oh man, hey, I worked on one of them too. That you see that fridge there, that's a troublemaker. That one was fun to deal with. That's a different story. Sorry. But, um, yeah, it's more or less like space saving, you know, everyone's on that. You know, I need more space uh, consolidating things and, you know, all of that. It's basically the same idea as any other washer or dryer at that, 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 but it just gives you more more space to put more stuff that you'll probably end up throwing out and putting some other stuff there. <laughs> more space safe. That's, that's it. Right, but that's one of the things here, save space in the apartment or small laundry yeah. area. Front yeah. load washing machine means can be stacked with a dryer. Portable see, washing see, just can that. Be from hookups and store away when not in use. Yeah, so you you know it's like you can hide it. Yeah, you know, but you ain't you ain't putting much in that joint. You want if no, no, you no. know uh, you are gonna get about two pairs of jeans and a t shirt in there, and that's it. Um, but it won't take you six hours to dry them. <laughs> yeah, that one is a doozy, brother. Now you, now you ain't gonna be. You probably might be wearing them same jeans about two, three times before you wash them again. I tell you that because that joint you, it don't have that much space. Um, I said when I ran into one not too long ago, that one was more like a control issue. They had a power outage, mm -hmm. but yeah, you, it has like hardly any capacity in it, and you don't have to. I didn't notice if it had a sensor for uh, balancing loads and all that stuff. It looked really cool on the front, but I don't think it has all that technology because it's so small. Um, that would just, to me, be a kind of a waste of um, settings and stuff because that thing, it rolls. It's on wheels. So if the load is unbalanced, it'll just roll somewhere. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah. one of the cons that we talked about a little bit, of course, um, offers less water, washer capacity and other types of washers. Cannot wash load, large loads or bulky items like a comforter. All right, so you've said it. Um, let's look at some of these prices, man. You're talking about $12.49, um, $10.49, and then, of course, you have um, this joint is a, is a stack. So at least a stack to about $1,200 for these joints. So 
a lot of these machines are getting a lot of expensive. Well, I would say a lot of expensive. That makes no sense. Um, a lot of mula. <laughs> they cost you a lot of bread, man. They yeah, cost- well, you know, it's not too surprising because now that you say it, um, it, it you know, it kind of rings a bell, like with the uh, portable and compact dishwashers or those fancy refrigerators. I worked on some. That's why I pointed to that one. Uh, it begins with like an L or something. It's another. Um, um foreign brand but you know in those places you know there's smaller living quarters and stuff and and um like european things and all that not saying that you know they don't have larger places but it's usually like a european build or something like the fisher pay kel double drawer dishwasher um you can't put regular big size plates in it because it won't close it's made for smaller plates um so a lot of this uh a lot of this stuff is is based on uh, um, it's being the compacted. Made, the country that is made in sometimes have an effect yeah. on the property. Yeah, it's just it's compact and it's just designed to be that way. And then of course here is just you saving space. You know, you got a um, uh, you know five hundred square feet, and you got to put a bed, a couch, a TV, blah blah blah. blah. You start going up the list, and and you can ran out of space for anything else. You know, so just. You know, space saving, but you're going to lose something every time you gain something. So, uh, it's just it's just the way of the world. All right, so we're going to actually wrap up because I mean, other parts of the video are talking about sizes and all this other stuff, but we've yeah. dissect top load, front loaders, impellers, agitators, laundry centers, portable wash machines. Um, um, so you know, of course, we always end each show with an actual tip. I'm going to let you go ahead and jump off on this one, man. What tips that you might have if you got one or two tips that you can share with the audience? Um, First one is, of course, I can't stress it enough. Please read your manual with these newer washing machines. Mm -hmm. That will tell you exactly what to do. I don't read manuals all the time um, just because of my nature. I I just want to figure it out. And, of course, it causes trouble sometimes. But with these new machines, it is so important to read what it does because you will think that it's broken and it's actually sensitive. You will think that it's loud when it's telling you it's going to spin this fast. It's going to be certain sounds coming out of it. It's going to be clicks and bells and whatever else. So that's very important with these newer models. Um, second of all, definitely the uh, don't forget about the cleaning. That's very important with the front loaders. Leave your doors open to allow them to breathe because that seal is so tight and you always have a little water in there. It will become stagnant because that water has so uh, the, 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 the clothes dirt in it and it's detergent and all that. And then it's just closed up, which allows it to start mildewing and you'll actually start to build a mold. Um, a mold will start to grow around the door boot and all that. And you actually want to clean that door boot you know, get into that little pocket and wipe that out and clean out the lint and everything. And um, I'm going to throw a third one out there, too, with the front loader. If it has an access panel, every now and then clean that screen. Clean that. It's a You open up that little panel. It might be on the lower left-hand side or the lower right-hand side, depending on what kind of model it is. You take that open, have some towels ready, um, and you just unscrew that filter and clean it out. A lot of times it's chains, hairpins, um, bra wire in there, buttons, um, all types of stuff. And that actually slows down the water movement. Uh, Brother Rich spoke on it before in the beginning part of the show um, that it, you, you know, if it's not draining well and things of that nature, that's usually where your problem lies. So go there first or call Rich's Appliance Repair or Tinker. We got you. All right, you so got, brother? Things, um, I'm going to just go a little bit different because I think you covered a lot of the stuff there. One of the biggest issues that I see at times is loading your clothes, loading the wash machine, whether it's a top load unit. Again, if it's a top load unit, whether it's an impeller or an agitator, you want to make sure you load your clothes around the machine, around the impeller, around the agitator, not on top of it. That makes it difficult for the wash machine to wash your clothes properly. Um, it can cause your machine to be um, unbalanced. Of course, you don't want that to happen as well. Um, front load units, again, you wanna also make sure that your clothes are free. 
You want to make sure that you balance the clothes out, right? Um, make sure that the clothes are loose and free. Don't overload your machine. The more you overload the machine, the more issues and more problems that you're going to have with the machine. Again, it's going to make loud noises. It could damage your suspensions. I had one yesterday where a customer's son put a comforter inside the machine. The tub, it was a front load unit. And it's a stackable unit, so we had to take the dryer off and repair it that way. But the spring came off the machines. There's a spring on the left and a spring on the right that holds the tub up. So that spring fell off on one side. The suspensions came off in the back on another side. So we had to, you know, rehook everything back up together and all that type of stuff because it was too much weight inside the machine. So you just want to be careful with that. Don't want to overload the machine. Um, that's a key component. Um, I had another one, but I think it might have slipped my brain, man. Um, I was trying to think there. You talked about cleaning, which is good. Tub cleaning and all that stuff is good as well. Um, always make sure you're using the right detergent. Um, that is key. It has to have the HE or high efficiency logo on the, the actual detergent. So you look at the HE. You want to make sure you have that as well. Um, I would say... Um, I disagree with Marquise with the first thing that he mentioned, talking about reading your owner's manual. Don't worry about it. We do that at Consumer Plan Support. We teach you how to fix your. Yeah, we'll teach you how your machine works. We give you the overall grade. Of course, check your boy out, Richie Rich. We do some awesome reviews, man. So we would like you guys, of course, always like the videos, interact with the videos. If you have any questions that you might have. For next week's show, then, of course, we'll read those out loud as well um, and give you um, our professional opinion and answers and what we think about the appliance. You can reach us at the YouTube channel at Consumer Appliance Report, or you can um, visit our email address where it's uh, car21136 at gmail.com, car21136 at gmail.com. All right, Joe. So other than that, man, I'm with it. I'm good, man. Um, appreciate your support as always, my brother. Um, we about to get out of here. You already know who I am, man. I'm going to say my, my little slogan before I leave out. So you got to give me that opportunity, sir. Go for it, my brother. All right, cool. All right, you already know who I am, man. I'm your boy, Richie Rich. I can see upon support. You help me. I help you. We both help each other. Till next time, I'm out of here. Peace. What you got, son? Hey, it's Marquisha Repair Extraordinaire, and I'm out of here like last year. Y'all have a great rest of the day, and please leave some comments because we do read them, and we love to help you. And don't forget, call us, call us. Like they said, call Tyrone. No, call Richard Marquise. <laughs>